Hello. This is she. Where? How much? I won't do that one. I don't know that. You're the one paying me. Well, what do you want? I don't know. A family sized pepperoni? I've heard of that one before. It's kind of morbid. Okay, are you ready? You've got to give me a second. <sighs> There's a place in heaven prepared for me where the toils of life is over, over. It's the Not Too Late Show with our very special guest, Pope Urban the Six. Yay! Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Not Too Late Show. I am your host, Henry L. Falling Luenda Demon, uh, broadcasting to you live from the Tropicana in Havana, Cuba. Cuba. And I have with me in the studio the lovely and 70% rational Carrie Kaufman. Hello, hello. Hey, wait a minute. What is that supposed to mean? Hey, well, creativity by its very nature is non rational. Yeah. <laughs> so I said you were 30% creative. Yeah, that argument in and of itself is very creative. But wait a minute. You think I'm only 30% creative? Now, that's the non rational side of you talking. <laughs> <laughs> we have a great show in store for you. Uh, it is my sincere hope that we could spark a revival of historical learning so as to regain some well-regulated pride back into our nation. And there's nothing that says we have to be better than everyone else, but by the same token, someone has to set an example for the rest of the world or this whole place would just suck. Hank! So, is that a bad word? I'm sorry. Can I not say that? Uh, does using that word in that context turn me automatically into Howard Stern, or can I still be on Nickelodeon? Well, it certainly won't get you on the 700 Club. <laughs> well, it's like my good friend uh, Billy Graham told me. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're friends with Billy Graham. Well, he's, he's not a man afraid to be around sinners. Yeah, hmm. And so what did Billy Graham tell you? Well, like my friend Billy Graham told me, you mm -hmm. can't siphon gasoline unless you breathe a little fire first. Okay. Now, it's funny that you should mention Billy Graham, since today, after all, is April 20th, Easter Sunday. Uh, what? Wh wh Today's April 20th? Yes. 420. All right, there you go with the marijuana jokes. Oh, dude, is that what I was doing? Whoa, I didn't even, even get my own joke. You know, for someone who doesn't smoke the stuff, you sure make a lot out of it. <laughs> and now, hemp is very versatile, yes, but uh, I also don't make clothing out of broccoli. <laughs> And I don't smoke wicker that I bought from a drug lord. <laughs> yeah, there's an analogy in there somewhere. <laughs> well, yes, I am aware of the significance of this day, the day when the Lord Jesus Christ arose from the dead and proceeded to make much more of his ministry than anyone would have ever thought. I, I think, however, that even most Christians have difficulty actually celebrating the day with much ardor, uh, at least from my personal experience, because uh, unlike Christmas, it, it doesn't fall on the same day every year. Okay, so... Um I think I am going to discuss this a little bit later on anyways, but why, what, why is that? Well, I'm glad you asked, Carrie, because Lord knows I've grown weary of depending on calendar makers first and my church congregation second <laughs> to provide that date for me. Uh, to help you answer your question, I wanted to get the Emperor Constantine to appear on the show, but, oh. but he was already booked for a future show. Yeah. Okay, so so who did you get? Well, I kind of struggled a little bit and called a few people, but... Uh, we might just have to wait until after the announcements and the break. All right. All right. So that's your cue. That's my cue. All right. April 20th announcements. Once again, a major shout out to the folks over at TOK Radio in Oklahoma who air our pre-recorded episodes every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So go check out their station at Spreaker.com slash Radio. Click the link down in the descriptions. Uh, or I think I'm supposed to point this way. Or... <laughs> And you know, I never worked the dang pointing thing out, but <laughs> go down that somewhere. Anyways, just find the descriptions and click on their link. They have a roster of shows out there that you can listen to. They are a lovable bunch of nutcases, which is what makes their show so much fun. 
And you know what these lovable nuts are up to? Mm. These lovable nuts, uh, TFOK Radio, is having a benefit to raise money for the Oklahoma chapter of Autism Speaks. It is this coming Saturday, six days from, from today. Uh, April 26 at 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. in Shawnee, Oklahoma. There will be a five-mile walk. There's live music, speakers, a hot dog eating contest, which ought to be interesting, a uh, raffle for prizes, so if you like free stuff. Uh, the link is down in the description. Go click on it. It goes to a Facebook page that explains all about it. Now, after you listen to this show, you need to hop on over to YouTube. You always hear me talking about the descriptions and whatnot. Check out some of the behind the seats footage of us recording these shows. As always, you can look for our channel. It's at Not Too Late Show. Or you can go to our website and there's a little YouTube button up there at the top of the page somewhere. Now, if I might, I'd like to take a quick moment to point out some magazines that are currently on the bookshelf. And if you're watching the video, you're going to see me. I'm posting the magazines right there. There it is. There you can see it. There's Miss Marilyn. There's a couple of magazines that are on the newsstand right now. You can find them at any kind of grocery store. Both of these are from Time, Inc. And this one here is The Beatles Invasion, the inside story of the two-week tour that rocked America. And it so happened that this one was authored by Bob Spitz, who we talked about him last week. And uh, he did the... He did the book about Julia Child, Deary, I think it was. And, uh, well, I've read this one cover to cover, and it's really a really wonderful read. You kind of feel sorry for the guys until they get to Florida, and then they're like, you know, oh, they're having fun in the waves and stuff. But it's a really remarkable read about the two weeks that they were here in America when they first came over here, the events leading up to it, and then a little bit about, you know, after. But... um, it's fun. And then this other one here is about Marilyn Monroe. I'm still working on this one, but it's a really good read, too. I skipped straight to the part about her and JFK. And did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> did you know, evidently, there might have been a tryst with RFK as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. There's yeah. little. Yeah, and she, she was a busy girl. She was a very. He was a busy. Well, and JFK was a busy boy. Yeah, so brothers like to share. Oh, evidently, brothers like to share, Bobby. And then they, and it even <laughs> talks a little bit about theories, like multiple theories for what happened the night she died, and mm-hmm. and so it, it's. I can tell you for a fact the end of it is saucy. Yes, I skipped to the last <laughs> chapter, <laughs> but I am gonna. Um, the awesome. the Beatles awesome. book is on the shelf until the twenty sixth of this month, and then the Marilyn Monroe one is on the shelf somewhere in the middle of May. So, and I'm going to finish that one up, but they're good. So I recommend it. Um, last but certainly not least, oh, Hank, you know what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> what am I about to beg for? for that, that, that cheesy British program that's been around forever. Uh, <laughs> n- not that one. Oh, <laughs> okay. And it's only been around 50 years. All right, fine. I'm about to talk about money. Oh. Yes. Oh, yes. Donations. When you we, want money, when, right? When we beg, yes. Yes. <laughs> Donations or sponsorships, whatever. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Any, Donations or sponsorship. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll work too. Yes. <laughs> Everybody needs to have money. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and Marlon Brando. Okay. <laughs> um. So anyways, but as Hank was saying, go to our website. There's a button there. You can get get us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, a few other places. You know, donate some money. It's through PayPal. It's quick. It's painless. We love you guys if you do it for us. And if you have a business that you'd like, you know, because we're on TFOK Radio and they don't just, it's not just in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's not just in the Oklahoma area. TFOK Radio is international, like all over the world. So if you have something you'd like to really promote to thousands and thousands of people, um, let us know and we can probably very well help you out. And uh, thank you in advance for your support. You're awesome. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Bartolomeo Prignano, also known as Pope Urban the Sixth. Have a seat there, Your Excellency. Uh, don't you uh, have a, something a little higher? You mean like a throne? Yeah, a uh, throne. Uh, how's a pope supposed to do his pope thing without a throne? Uh, 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 Gina, c- could you rush over to Ikea and see if we can uh, uh, get a throne for, for Mr. Urban? 
So, are you related to the Keith Urban, the country singer? Uh, Carrie, that's that's not even his birth name. Oh, sorry. It's okay. I'll explain it to the pretty lady over here. Oh. In my country, they call me Urbano. My birth name was Bartolomeo Brignano. Once I beat out the other guy, that is to say, once the conclave okayed the vote, I changed it. Pope Bart, he didn't have too much oomph in it. I mean, uh, Pope Bart sounds like a pushover, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I'd have to agree with that. Now, now you were elected Pope uh, uh, to replace... Uh... Uh, Gregorio the Eleventh. Okay, and then you were installed as Pope on Easter Sunday, uh, April 18th, uh, 1378. Uh, something like, uh, yeah. Hmm, I bet that was fun. I mean, I bet all of Rome had a big egg hunt and there were, had to have been chocolate bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, chocolate bunnies uh, for all, g- girly. Okay, <laughs> you okay? <laughs> well, now, now what happens? So cigars, uh, those Italian cigars. Uh, now, what happens after you get elected is kind of interesting, and you've been rated as one of the worst popes in history, uh, mainly because of your quick temper. Uh, who, who said that? Uh, Did uh, that come from uh, that uh, French guy, Clementine? <laughs> you mean Clement the Seventh? Uh, he, he's a fairy. You lock me in a room with any one of those damn French pops. I can best them any day of the week. And don't believe anything you read in the papers. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hold your horses there. Well, okay. Well, I'm 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 right there with you. I, I generally don't read the papers. Uh, I'll consult a book for most of these issues myself. What did you say your name was? Are you a French guy? Um, Demondini. I'm not so familiar with that name. Which part of Italy does uh, your family come from? I think what Hank's trying to ask you is, are the allegations that you like to torture your detractors, are they true? <laughs> <laughs> we did it to him again. <laughs> Look, when you're a pope, you got to take care of a business. Okay, well, can you tell us why Easter is celebrated on a different day every year? I don't know. You tell me. I mean, <laughs> I got cardinals with the calendars, and they tell me, go stand over here. Go wave your scepter over there. I don't know why. I just know it comes once a year. Hank, did you say he was the worst pope ever? <laughs> well, well, we're still a new show for all practical purposes. Uh-huh. I, I had to book who was available. You know, uh, John the Eleventh, uh, the pope who was killed while, well, you know, messing around. Oh, please! Uh, he 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 wanted to be on the show, and oh, I, I'm sure. I, I had to draw the line somewhere. Well, you two would have made good pals. Well, from, from what I know, there was a pope a while back who didn't want Passover and Easter to conflict, <laughs> so he made the agreement with Jewish leaders that Passover would come first, and that was the 15th day of the month of of Nisan or Nisan or however you say it in. Hebrew, and Jewish calendars are based on moon phases, so the 15th of Nisan occurs on any day of the week after the vernal equinox. Okay. Is this any, making any sense? <laughs> it's uh, clear as mud. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> uh, so, so Easter Sunday is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. Okay. Let's play Only Jerks Hate History. All right. <laughs> All right, well, it's time for my favorite part of the show, Jerks Hate History, and today's subject, if you can't already guess, is called Easter, and I have Easter, I have, I have Easter for you, Easter for oh, you, whiz. and... Thank you so much, I yes. appreciate it, yes, and I love it. the pink, is my favorite color. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, oh, sorry, pink is my color, or, um, actually, no, you get the rabbit, hand, hand me the oh. pink. Oh, what are you, being an Indian giver with Pope Urban here? Well, he... Well, <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> Silly rabbits. It's tricks for kids. There you go. And eggs. We have eggs. We have eggs. And we have SpongeBob. Sponge, so I'll hand out the SpongeBob later. The so mics. anyways, so yeah, as you can tell, this is one of my favorite times of the year. And, and no, not because of the candy so much, although the candy's nice. 
So. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're, you're welcome. Well, thank you for, for, for taking part in our celebration. And so, of course. And as you can tell, I've only had a little bit. I've like had a whole thing of peeps already. So I hope nobody can tell. I'm, I think I'm like coming off the sugar. <laughs> Um, so anyways, it's all is it good. hot in here? <laughs> Subject, Easter. All right. Question number one. What is the meaning of Easter as celebrated by the Christian? I think as you can tell, we got starting off with some easy ones. What is the meaning of Easter as celebrated by the Christian churches? Is it every year the Easter bunny would give eggs to good kids? The Easter bunny got shot by a hunter? Not my question, somebody else's. These came from <laughs> fun trivia. <laughs> and I haven't read these. In, my goodness, what was I thinking? The Easter Bunny got <laughs> shot by a hunter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, or the celebration of the Passover? Dope Urban, the sixth, the fifth, sixth. You the invited sixth. them. Vi. <laughs> Pope Urban Vi. There you go. The, me, I don't know too much, you know. But... Uh, <laughs> The, celeb- the celebration of the Passover. Okay. Well, it was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There you go. Ding, 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 ding. You see, I know nothing. <laughs> You're a Pope. My land's alive. How could you not get that one? Worst Pope ever, right? <laughs> there you go. Ew. You see why I was a Pope? He was. He was actually. He was actually pretty well versed in Christianity. He was right. just a poor decision maker. Oh well, <laughs> there you go. That, that, that doesn't paint it at all. Okay. Oh, bless your heart. All righty. Or you could bless mine either way. No, please don't bless mine. <laughs> no blessings. <laughs> no blessings from Pope Purper, Purper, Purper the Sixth. Or curses. Or curses. No curses either. Now, when did the rabbit become a symbol of Easter in the United States? Was it the 1500s, the 1600s, the 1700s, or the 1800s? I'm going to say the 1700s. Okay. Thank you. I'd have to say the 1800s. The Pope's got it. Oh, I'll be hard. Yeah, see, go figure. I get that one right, and I missed it the first question. <laughs> and that's why I'm the worst <laughs> Pope in the history. <laughs> rabbits were first used as a sense of rabbits. They're easy. Cute little Don't rabbit. Don't bump anything. Oh, okay. That's, oh. oh, that's a chicken rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, oh, that's a bunny rabbit. <laughs> and he's not moving. Yes. Rabbits were first used as a symbol of Easter in Germany in the 16th century. The Easter bunny tradition was brought to America in the 1700s by German settlers. I'll be darned. How about that? All right. I learned something new today. (laughs) And you have totally killed it on this next question. I think we all know Easter is celebrated on the same date each year. Let's just all answer it together. False. You're right. Yeah, Yeah, true or false. (laughs) So I was like, I can't believe you, like, you beat me to the punch. But then again, that's why I should read the script before. (laughs) Maybe I shouldn't write one. (laughs) (laughs) All right. What does Gethsemane mean? Okay. And Choices? uh, (laughs) (laughs) Wait. Pope Urban the Six, what do you do with people like this? <laughs> we throw them to the wolves. No. I was hoping we throw for throw spaghetti ex- at them. <laughs> um, a, uh, was it um, place of the skull? B, beautiful garden? C, press of oils? Or D, go to the go to the tomb? I'm going to say a beautiful garden. Yeah, that's that's what I believe it is also. Okay, and interestingly enough, that's the one I thought it was, but it's called Press of Oils. Oh. So the Garden of Gethsemane is, Gethsemane is on the lower slopes of the Mount of Olives. And so it was planted with a whole bunch of olive trees. And it is believed that some of those trees still produce olives today. Wow. Had a lot of olive presses around it. And Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane after singing the Passover hymns to pray. And that's where he was arrested. Uh, Last question. Uh, Christians and others recognize this as a season of joy celebrating the resurrection of Christ. Do you know one likely explanation on how Easter got its name? Was it the Babylonian goddess name or the Germanic word for sunlight? The Russian pronunciation of the Hebrew word Pascal, Greek God's name and the Greek word for holiness, or the Aramaic word meaning rain or the Sumerian word for yellow? Want me to summarize those? (laughs) (laughs) 
We're basically I, you know, asking, where did the name Easter come from? I'm going to say the, the Russian name, Pasquale, or whatever you say. Okay. The, the number two, the sec- second choice. Pascal. Pascal. Yeah, I got to go with Pope Urban over here. Okay, actually, it was the word for sunlight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. That is a messed, messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I got y'all this week. Most likely two of the strongest po- possibilities for the derivation of the word Easter are either from the ancient Assyrian Ishtar or from the Germanic word for white or sunshine. Um, Easter was originally a pagan festival. Uh, these celebrations were encountered by early missionaries, and rather than attempting to squelch out the festival entirely, they just decided to introduce Christian beliefs into the fe- festive season, and they were reluctantly adopted and improved upon by the early church. Looking at the festival of Easter in this way, it's easy to see how incongruous symbols of fertility of Easter eggs, bunnies, chicks, and all sorts of other pagan practices are associated with Easter exist right alongside the Christian belief of the resurrection of Christ. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well. That was the good, good questions. At least I got the one right. You yeah. did. Yay. I got you. Did I stump the expert this time? Uh, well, yeah, clearly. I, <laughs> <laughs> I had to really look for the. This one was a hard one to find really good questions. Yeah. yeah so, and yeah. I learned a lot too. Yeah. As always. <laughs> well, uh, that's 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 excellent. That includes that uh, segment of Only Jerks Hate History. And now it is time for History Strikes Back. Well, today is. Easter Sunday, April 20th, 2014. And I just got, man, I just got leveled uh, <laughs> on, on only, jerks got it, only Jerks Hate History. Um, I, pope Urban the, the Sixth, the worst pope in history over here, might have even beat me. And it's, that's really pathetic. Aww. Aww. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, there's always next week. Yes. Uh, and there's always the next Pope. That's yeah. not true, but uh, I'd like to wish everyone uh, a very happy Easter today. And bless everyone. Aw, thank you. <laughs> You're yeah. welcome. Unfortunately for you, Hank, I have not come up with questions for next week yet. Uh, oh. <laughs> so. Well, that's fine. You still have a week, mm-hmm. technically. Yep. Suggestions? Yeah. Uh, Obviously. No. <laughs> 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 because... <laughs> Because if I give you a suggestion, then I'll just get them all wrong. <laughs> oh, well, you didn't do so bad when we did the Constitution. Uh, no, not too bad. All right, history strikes back. Uh, what I have scripted here is in 1920, uh, tornadoes in Mississippi and Alabama killed 219. And actually, I, I have I have some, some uh, actual research here that I did Ooh. for that. So we'll come back to that. Uh, the Nivelle Offensive in 1917, which includes the Second Battle of Ain and the Third Battle of Champagne, ends in French failure. Uh, they weren't busting out any champagne after that one, I guess. All right. Uh, I guess the Germans were busting out the champagne. Yeah, letting you down. Uh, and then in 1871, we have the Third Enforcement Act. Mm-hmm. Now, what was the Third Enforcement Act? The Third Enforcement Act. I'd like to read this to you because I, I was curious to know what the Third Enforcement Act was myself. Uh, also known as the Ku Klux, Ku Klux Act. The Third Enforcement Act was designed to prevent individual state officials or organized conspiracies from, from depriving persons of their civil rights, particularly in the South where the Ku Klux Klan rode. Where the Civil Rights Act of 1866 had permitted a criminal remedy, this measure allowed the offended party to take action in civil court too. It also defined conspiracy as two or more persons using the public roads, wearing disguises, or violating the property of another to deny someone his civil rights. It permitted the president to use the army and navy as a posse comitatus comitatus, to assist U.S. marshals or enforce court orders independently and to suspend temporarily the writ of habeas corpus. That's a big deal. Any official who failed to use his office to prevent a violation of this measure was declared liable with fines of $1,000 or more in jail terms of one year to, to life if the offended citizen lost his life. So, so it was protecting the Ku Klux Klan? No. Oh. No, not at all. Oh, keeping them from, oh, the, the opposite. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, I misunderstood. Yeah. Um, but the big deal, though, is is uh, and what you'll find in the, the this day in history stuff is is the it says the, talking about the temporary suspension of the writ of habeas corpus. Now, I'm not a lawyer, 
But from the way I understand it, mm-hmm. the writ of habeas corpus can be suspended in times of war. Okay. In, yeah. In times of war or insurrection. And so it included uh, contingencies such as conspiracy or uh, in- interfering with public roads, wearing disguises, violating property, uh, so as to hold up in court that it would be a in- an insurrection of sorts, mm-hmm. right? Even if it was one person that they were violating their right. civil rights, it w- could still be interpreted as, a, as an insurrection. That's just a amateur's. Yes, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I thought, it was, but nonetheless, I thought it was very interesting, and I, and I keep coming across it, and, and I'm like, well, what the fuck? What was the Third Enforcement Act? How about that? Huh. Um, oh, good. Some of the things from HistoryOrb.com. In 1657, the battle in Santa Cruz Bay, Tenerif, Tenerife? I have no idea how to pronounce that. Tenerife? <laughs> English fleet under Robert Blake. Robert Blake, you familiar with Robert Blake, Pope, Pope Urban? From a free, from a Beretta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> from in the seventies. Yeah, uh, he seeks his Spanish silver fleet. Uh, Captain Cook arrived in New, New South Wales in seventeen seventy. Uh, the British began their siege of Boston in seventeen seventy five. Uh, in eighteen sixty one, Colonel Robert E. Lee resigned from the Un- Union Army. This is all events that happened on April twentieth. In history. Uh, is it Robert E. Lee? Yeah. Colonel Robert E. Lee resigned from the Union Army. Really? Well, yeah. I didn't know he, he was. Or he retired or? He became a Confederate. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is significant. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, Mr. Lee. And then 18, what is it? 1888, 246 reported killed by hail in Moradabad, India. Wow. Man, must have been... How many? 240... 246 killed by hail. Wow. I guess, did they not have shelters or... I I, I guess so. I, <laughs> normally you go indoors. So that, that, wow, big rocks falling from the sky. Let's go inside. Yeah, I know. I, I, I guess they were all like camped out in an open area or something. Oh, wow. Well, it's generally a poor country, so, you know, or especially in 1888. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it was still a British protectorate then. I saw, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Blame the British. Uh, uh, 1920, the Balfour Declaration was recognized, making Palestine a British mandate. Um, here's one that I thought was interesting. In 1944, the NFL legalized coaching from the bench. Oh, dear. <laughs> And all that's, moms that's a very everywhere. interesting. Yeah, and all moms everywhere rejoiced. <laughs> um, so is that like just the? So who could coach from the bench? Just the coaches or dads or? That's all it anyone? says. NFL legalized coaching from the bench. Oh, you dear. want to look that one up? Yeah, I'm going to look that one up. What, what year? 1944. 1944. 1967. The French author Regis Debray is caught in Bolivia. Ooh, I don't know who Ricky Caught, caught to doing what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the quarry <laughs> minds, I want to know. <laughs> uh, I like this one. 1976, George Harrison sings the Lumberjack song with Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. Yeah, how about that? The Lumberjack song. And uh, here's, here's one for you, Pope Urban. Uh, 1993, Uranus. Past <laughs> Neptune. It only happens once every 171 years. I always wait for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> did Did you find something about the uh, illegal coaching in in the NFL? I'm working on that. <laughs> it's, it's not not being easy to find. Oh, here I we don't, go. I don't think I have a book this week. Let me let me look over well, here what I have here in front of me. In 1947, Frederick Ix becomes king of Denmark. Frederick the Ninth, I believe. Um, King of Denmark. I mean, <laughs> that's, that'd be a cushy job, wouldn't it? You sit around and do nothing. Yeah. Tell people what to do. <laughs> that's what it's not like to do me. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that what you did as Pope? Exactly. So it's all good. 
Why do it yourself when you can rely on others to do the dirty work, right? Absolutely. Um, well, and that's, that's what I got. All righty. That's what I got. So some closing announcements before we wrap it up. All righty. Um, make sure you check us out on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Soundscriber at Not Too Late Show. And by the way, Soundscriber is now available on the Android. Uh, you can listen to our show via the website and then listen to us again at TFOK Radio every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And speaking of our website, www.nottoolateshow.com, check out Hank's blogs and his book reviews. While you're at it, sign up for our newsletter for weekly updates to the website and news about what's coming up. Finally, if you are watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe us. It makes us feel good. Gives us fuzzies. All Yay. right. <laughs> All right. That wraps up another one, and uh, y'all have a happy Easter out there, y'all. Bye-bye. Happy Easter. 